Okay, guys, welcome back. We are currently on chapter seven in Holes by Lewis Sacker. Uh, we have learned the story about uh, great great grandpa Elia and how he was so in love with Myra uh, and was given a task by the Egyptian woman in town uh, to climb up the mountain carrying the piglet every day let the piglet drink out of the spring that runs the opposite direction and then on the very last day he was supposed to actually carry her up the the mountain uh, and he didn't Elia went to see if he would be chosen to marry Myra and Myra did not choose Elia um, instantly okay she wasn't sure who she should choose she didn't know in her defense it seems like she was never allowed to make a decision before in her life so it would be very difficult to know who to choose and to know how to make a decision especially a decision as important of who you're going to marry and spend a good portion of your life with uh, if you've never even been allowed to make a decision before. We talked a little bit about the issue of considering women. Myra was considered like something that was owned. She was owned by her father and she could then be owned by her husband by trading her for a pig. Mm, no, people, women, men, children, people are not objects. They are not things that are owned and can be traded or be given a value of, be bought. Um, that's very, very important. And I think um, Elia actually recognizes that. Uh, and he was very disappointed when Myra did not choose to marry him. And so because of that, he actually ended up heading off to America, which is what the Egyptian lady wanted him to do in the first place. Didn't want him to marry Myra because she had nothing in her head, she said, and that he should go to America and make his own life, start fresh. And this is what ends up happening. So that is interesting. So here we go, we're on page 38. In America, Elia learned to speak English. He fell in love with a woman named Sarah Miller. She could push a plow, milk a goat, and most important, think for herself. She and Elia often stayed up half the night talking and laughing together. So he meets a new woman, Sarah. She can do all these things. She's very, very capable. And so it seems like they really get along well. Their life was not easy. Elia worked hard, but bad luck seemed to follow him everywhere. Hmm, maybe that curse. He always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He remembered Madame Zeroni telling him that she had a son in America. Elia was forever looking for him. He'd walk up to complete strangers and ask if they knew someone named Zeroni or had ever heard of anyone named Zeroni. No one did. Elia wasn't sure what he'd do if he ever found Madame Zeroni's son anyway. Carry him up a mountain and sing the pig lullaby to him? After his barn was struck by lightning for the third time, he told Sarah about his broken promise to Madame Zeroni. I'm worse than a pig thief, he said. You should leave me and find someone who isn't cursed. I'm not leaving you, said Sarah, but I want you to do one thing for me. Anything, said Elia. Sarah smiled. Sing me the pig lullaby. He sang it for her. Her eyes sparkled. That's so pretty. What does it mean? Because remember, Elia speaking his language. Uh, he was from Latvia, I believe. So he'd be speaking Latvian, right? He, he's singing this song in a whole different language. It's not English. 
Elliot tried his best to translate it from Latvian into English, but it wasn't the same. It rhymes in Latvian, he told her. I could tell, said Sarah. A year later, their child was born. Sarah named him Stanley because she noticed that Stanley was Yelnitz spelled backwards. Sarah changed the words of the pig lullaby so that they rhymed and every night she sang it to little Stanley. If only, if only, the woodpecker sighs, the bark on the tree was as soft as the skies, while the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, crying to the moon. If only, if only. Stanley's hole was as deep as his shovel, but not quite wide enough on the bottom. He grimaced as he sliced off a chunk of dirt then raised it up and flung it onto a pile. He laid his shovel back down on the bottom of his hole and to his surprise, it fit. He rotated it and only had to chip off a few chunks of dirt here and there before it could lie flat across his hole in every direction. He heard the water truck approaching and felt a strange sense of pride at being able to show Mr. Sir or Mr. Pendansky, that he had dug his first hole. He's proud of himself. It was hard work. He put his hands on the rim and tried to pull himself up. He couldn't do it. His arms were too weak to lift his heavy body. He used his legs to help, but he just didn't have any strength. He was trapped in his hole. It was almost funny, but he wasn't in the mood to laugh. Stanley, he heard Mr. Pendansky call. Using his shovel, he dug two footholds into the whole wall. He climbed out to see Mr. Pendansky walking over to him. I was afraid you'd fainted, Mr. Pendansky said. You wouldn't have been the first. I'm finished, Stanley said, putting his blood spotted cap back on his hat head. All right, said Mr. Pendansky, raising his hand for a high five, but Stanley ignored it. He didn't have the strength. Mr. Pendansky lowered his hand and looked down at Stanley's hole. Well done, he said. You want to ride back? Stanley shook his head. I'll walk. Mr. Pendansky climbed back into the truck without filling Stanley's canteen. Stanley waited for him to drive away, then took another look at his hole. He knew it was nothing to be proud of, but he felt proud nonetheless. He sucked up his last bit of saliva and spat. All right, so that's the end of chapter seven. We're gonna go straight into chapter eight. A lot of people don't believe in curses. A lot of people don't believe in yellow spotted lizards either. But if one bites you, it doesn't make a difference whether you believe in it or not. Actually, it is kind of odd that scientists name the lizard after its yellow spots. Each lizard has exactly 11 yellow spots, but the spots are hard to see on its yellow green body. The lizard is from six to 10 inches long and has big red eyes. In truth, its eyes are yellow and its skin around the eyes, which is red. But everyone always speaks of its red eyes. It also has black teeth and a milky white tongue. Okay, th this lizard sounds creepy. Ew. Looking at one, you would have thought that it should have been named a red-eyed lizard or a black-toothed lizard or perhaps a white-tongued lizard. If you've ever been close enough to see the yellow spots, you are probably dead. The yellow spotted lizards like to live in holes, which offer shade from the sun and protection from predatory birds. Up to 20 lizards may live in one hole. They have strong, powerful legs and can leap out of very deep holes to attack their prey. 
They eat small animals, insects, certain cactus thorns, and the shells of sunflower seeds. All right, so it sounds like where they are, Camp Green Lake, is a very good place, a nice habitat for these spotted lizards, yellow spotted lizards, to live. Deep holes, stay away from the birds, uh, and yes, there are a lot of shells of sunflower seeds. All right, guys, we will leave it there. Next video will be chapter nine. Take care.